This episode is brought to you by Mightier. Mightier is a biofeedback-based video game platform that teaches kids to emotionally self-regulate. This leads to a significant reduction in meltdowns and parental stress. It's backed by science out of Harvard Medical and Boston Children's and has helped over 100,000 kids. For more information, visit theautismdad.com forward slash mightier. That's theautismdad.com forward slash M-I-G-H-T-I-E-R and use the code theautismdad22 to save 10%. Welcome to the Autism Dad Podcast. I'm Rob Gorski. For the past seven seasons, this podcast has provided parents with education, community, resources, and validation. This season, you'll hear from parents just like you, as well as my own kids, who will offer their unique perspectives on what it's like for them to navigate the world as young autistic people. You can subscribe on any one of your favorite podcast listening apps. And for more information to be a guest or a sponsor, please visit theautismdad.link. Welcome back, folks. My name is Rob Gorski, and this is the Autism Dad Podcast. I've got a fantastic episode for you guys today. I recently sat down with Kim Houck. She is the director for the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. And we have a conversation about what the Ohio Department of DD does, like at a state level, how they oversee the local county boards of DD. We talk about adult transitional things, like as our kids age out of the uh, high school services and stuff like that and age into adulthood. And she also helps people who are not living in the state of Ohio connect with resources in the state with which they live in. So I really appreciate you guys and I hope you enjoy the interview. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. I really appreciate it. Could you take a second and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Hi, sure. Uh, my name is Kim Houck. And I am the director at the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been here at the department for about 10 years now. Uh, before that, I worked out in the field. Um, I started in the late 80s. I started as a direct support professional. Oh, wow. Um, and at, at an intermediate care facility down in the Cincinnati area. Um, went to college and became a special ed teacher. So when I graduated, started teaching um, and worked down um, in Hamilton County at their Board of Developmental Disabilities for about 22 years and then came up here to the state. So came as the chief policy officer and then, you know, some other things helped transition our early intervention services from the Department of Health over here. Um, and then I've been the director for two years. How do you like it? I love it. I, I really love it. I love um, what I get to do every day. I love meeting with different people, um, talking to people with disabilities, talking to their families, um, working with the local providers and county boards. It's, um, it's been a great experience. So, so you started out like in the trenches, like I did. That's so cool. I, I, I like, I love that kind of story because you, you have insights into what parents and, and people are dealing with, you know, every day, and then how, you know, the department can be there to better meet their needs and support what they're doing. That's very cool. Absolutely. So what exactly, so, well, let me, let me ask it like this. So, you know, people listening will be all over the country, well, it's all over the world, but we're just going to focus on what the Ohio Department of Development of Disabilities does, because that's what we're here to do. What exactly does the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities do? Yeah, so, you know, something that's uh, a lot of people don't know and that's exciting is we are a cabinet agency, which means I report directly to Governor DeWine. Mm -hmm. um, and there are very few states that have that opportunity. So, you know, I um, get the experience of meeting with him, making sure that he understands the issues and, and what's going on across Ohio in the disability world. Um, but here at the department, we really are, we serve as a resource and um, a support for um, our local counties. And we do serve as the regulator also of providers and of our county boards. All right. So you guys are like, so like as, as parents, we, we interact typically with the local board of DD. That's right. And so you guys are in charge of all of the state all of the county boards of DD in the state of Ohio. Yeah, we are. We oversee um, their Medicaid um, okay. expenditures, you know, that sort of thing. The, the services that they provide with their federal and state dollars. 
So every local county also has locally funded services and they can decide um, how they spend those or what kind of services they provide uh, with those funds. But we do, we're responsible to ensure that there is, um, you know, state accessibility to those funds. Okay. So what, for, for the people out there, and it's surprising how many people I've connected with who, who don't know what the Board of DD does or what role it fills. Mm-hmm. And I, my oldest is, is um, working with the Stark County Board of, of DD currently. He's 24, transitioning into his adult life. We went through OOD. He's got his first job, learned that he's going to be moving out here. Maybe by the time people actually hear this, um, and the board of DD played a huge, huge support role in that. Can you can you help parents understand what, like what role the board of, of DD plays in the life of families and people living with disabilities? Absolutely. So in Ohio, we have eighty eight counties, which I think is interesting for you know not everybody knows that, um, and each county has a county board of developmental disabilities, and they. Um, First, you know, determine eligibility uh, of people with disabilities. Are they eligible for services? Um, They assign everyone what we call a service and support administrator or an SSA, and that's like a case manager um, to help families navigate the system. You know, the system is complex. Um, There's a lot of, you know, waivers and services, supports, those sorts of things that can get really um, confusing in our system. Um, So the county boards help families um, navigate and walk through all of those processes. My, so I mentioned that my oldest, uh, we got connected with the Board of DD, I don't know, about a year, a little over a year ago, I think, year and a half ago, maybe. And, you know, he he applied and was, was approved for the waiver program, which helps to cover his like transportation back and forth to work. Mm -hmm. And it'll help to cover transportation. Like once he moves out and he's living kind of his independent life, he wants to live his idea of independence for him. That makes him happy is living in a group home. He wants to live with friends and order DoorDash and have like movie nights and whatever. So you have more power to him. He'll, he'll do it. Uh, That's fantastic. You know, it's really, it's such a cool thing because he's one of those kids that, no one ever thought he would be where he is today. And there were, there were too many problems when he was younger. He was, you know, we're going to have to look at residential placement, like all of this stuff. And now he's, 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 I'm so proud of him. He's doing so well. And, uh, you know, I, I've been lucky enough to be able to utilize a lot of the services that are provided in the area, but even as, is like connected as I am, I'm still learning about things that I had no idea existed. And we connected with the board much later in his life. So he was like 22 going on 23, which is pretty late, I think, to get connected. Uh, but what like what age should parents reach out to the board of, of DD in their area and you know connect on, on that level? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the earlier, the better. Um, so all 88 of our county boards offer something called early intervention, which is birth until your third birthday. And so, you know, a lot of times we might not know that our child needs those extra services um, when they're first born or, you know, as an infant or a toddler. But, um, you know, we try really hard to get engaged with families very early in in their life and in their journey. So, um, you know, we have lots of different programs for youth, um, different services. you know, we connect with schools across the the state um, and do transition planning. So, you know, again, the earlier, um, the better. So is there an age, is there an is there like a cutoff for when someone, when someone is eligible to work with the board of DD and then when they like, do they ever age out? So you don't age, if, once you're eligible, you don't age out. It is a, um, you know, a birth and till death, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of service and support. Um, You do have to uh, show signs of a disability before your 21st birthday to be eligible. So um, people who might be in a car accident later in life, you know, those sorts of things um, aren't typically found eligible at our county boards. Okay. So what types of things 
for the average family, say like my, my kids are autistic and we have ADHD and you know, my oldest has uh, childhood disintegrative disorder. And so he, he developed typically, he was very advanced until about four, four and a half and then just massive regression. And so he never, like we never quite fit in like any, like, common category you know you know what i mean like we were always kind of in this gray area where finding support was very challenging what types of things can the board of dd provide for families you know with with uh with younger kids maybe for early intervention and then maybe we can follow up with that about you know that that transition into adulthood sure so early intervention is a federal program so they follow those you know federal kinds of supports and services so um, developmental specialists who come into your home and, and work with your family, work with you, your child, your family, um, speech therapists, occupational therapists, physical therapists, you know, all of those sorts of um, supports, mental health uh, providers, counselors, that sort of thing. You know, all of those services are available to families in early intervention, depending on your needs and, and your child's needs, right? And then, you know, as you get older, counties offer things like respite services. Um, A lot of times they'll have uh, programs where parents could maybe drop their kids off for just an evening a month or something like that, or respite in your home if that's what you need. We right now are working with county boards on a huge accessibility um, program. So we've given counties funding um, through some grants that we had available to really look at their communities and uh, adult changing tables and and those sorts of things. So county boards really just look at the the full age span and the needs of, of children and families, again, no matter their age, and what are the services and supports that families need. And I think counties, especially with those locally funded services, take different approaches. Yeah, because well, because it's it's with there being so many, right? And and you know, each county having their own, there's a lot of nuance that goes on between county to county. But then overall, it's sort of the same program, just sort of catered to the needs of people in that specific community. Is that this episode is brought to you by Goalie. Did you know the University of Michigan did a study that found over 80% of apps for kids are designed to lure them into longer gameplay and more in-app purchases? Goalie decided it was time for this to end. Unlike the Kindle and iPad that have endless ads and potentially dangerous content, Goalie is a tablet with only apps that build independent kids. It has no web browser, no social media, and no ads, ever. It has award-winning learning apps like Khan Academy, Duolingo ABC, and Starfall, and the best part? It's completely parent-controlled. In my house, we use Goalie's kids calendar to teach my son how to stay on task. He learns life skills like how to make a sandwich by watching one of the hundreds of video classes and can practice it by following along with one of the 50 pre-made routines. As a dad, there's no better feeling than knowing that my son is becoming more independent every day. For more information and to try Goalie risk-free for 30 days, visit getgoalie.com. That's G-E-T-G-O-A-L-L-Y.com and use the code THEAUTISMDAD to save 10%. Right. So you talked about your son having access to a waiver. Mm -hmm. Every county offers three different waivers, the self, you know, so there's three, you know, they're just a little bit different and nuanced. Um, But every county offers those and those services are, are concrete defined in rules, those sorts of things. So like homemaker personal care, we call it HPC, you know, that's going to look pretty much the same from, from county to county. It's those other services outside of the waiver that could look different. And I've been, I've been seeing a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of movement in the area of like accessible playgrounds for kids. We've been Mm -hmm. seeing, there's one that popped up in North Canton. There's one that popped up in Stowe. Um, is that, is that sort of driven by this program? So um, with the grant money that we just gave out, communities could or counties could ask for those funds to be used for a variety of things, accessible playgrounds, accessible fairgrounds, or, you know, places where 
a lot of festivals might happen, or if they have a big downtown area, maybe they need curb cuts and, and ramps and those sorts of things. And then again, we made a, a really large investment in universal changing tables. Um, there are two moms, Kim and Jennifer, who um, did a lot of work in that area. And so we were really happy to support them through the budget process and get some dedicated funding for that specific project. Yeah, I um, there was a movement. I can't remember the name of the organization now that they started. Uh, changing Spaces, yes, I yes. think. Yes, they were on a podcast a couple of years ago. And, and talking about right. the importance of adult changing tables. And it's not something that yes. most people would ever think about, but it makes a huge That's difference right. in the lives of, of families who need to utilize that. I've been seeing them pop up in, in restrooms uh, locally. And I, and I was, yeah. always makes me think of that, the conversation I have them, because that's so cool that we are, right. we are moving in, in the right direction on that stuff. Um, just sort of because you, you've been kind of involved in this field for a long time, what are what are some of the positive changes that you think that, that you've noticed from the time that you were, you know, working as um, uh, like a support personnel to, to where you are, where you are today? We've made, we've made a lot of progress, but I think sometimes we don't, we're not always aware of that progress. Cause like maybe parents are just kind of jumping in now cause they have a, a kid that's diagnosed with something now and they don't realize how much better it's actually gotten. Does that make sense? Yeah, Absolutely. I think we've made a ton of progress um, over the past 30 some years. Um, I think even having these conversations about accessible restrooms and, you know, we weren't having those kinds of conversations back, you know, back then. Um, having the opportunity to really live, work, play, go to church, you know, all those kinds of things in your community. Uh, we were much more focused on, on, not that we aren't focused on safety now, but I think we, you know, we weren't giving people the opportunity to live to their full potential, to really um, take those risks that we all take every day. And so I, I, that's really exciting to see. I think here at the department, we've made a, a big effort to uh, really listen to the voices of people with disabilities themselves. Um, really hear what's important to them, what they want to do um, with their future. And so I think that's been really exciting. Are there are there things that you would like to see uh, as we move forward, like improvements or or things that you're aware of that need to be addressed, but maybe we haven't gotten there yet, if that makes sense? Sure. I think we've made a lot of progress in Ohio um, around our employment first efforts. So people working in the community, having, um, you know, good paying jobs. I think um, there's still a lot of people who have some really high intensive needs and, you know, working in the community might not be their first choice. And so ensuring that we really have good options and programming for them, um, again, for what they want to do, where they want to um, be engaged during the day um, after high school, making sure that we have lots of options for them, I think is, is really important and um, something that we've, we have on our, you know, in our sites and trying to work hard on. I, yeah. Cause my, my oldest, I, like I mentioned before, I'm very proud of him. So I'm going to talk about him one more time. That's he, uh, he, he went through the, the, uh, he went through OOD did his job training, mm -hmm. had a job coach and was, uh, you know, recommended for community employment, like regular, a regular job. And mm -hmm. he does so well. Like he, he, it's so, it's so cool to see the look on his face when he puts on his little, like his name tag and his, you know, his uniform and he's packing his lunch and getting ready to go to work. Like th these are all things that as a parent, like I, I cannot stress enough how amazing it feels. And, you know, I always try to kind of instill hope in, in parents because I think a lot of times when our kids are diagnosed just with autism specifically, cause that's my experience. Um, we get, we get diagnosed, our kids get diagnosed, we get a piece of paper and we're kind of ushered out the door and that's largely it. That's what parents feel like that overall experience has been. And, and in those moments, like we feel like what is what we're experiencing right now, like where our kids are right now is where they're always going to be. And so this is, this is just it. And, and that's not always the case. 
because it's it's like a snapshot in time. It's how it's how we it's where they are in the moment, so that we can identify the need and match it with a service, right, and resources. And where they're going to be five, 10, 15 years from now is not representative of where they are currently, right? Everybody starts somewhere. And I just, I've become very aware of that as my oldest has, has transitioned into his, you know, his own independent life. Because if I had, I, I just never thought it would be possible. And, and I know there's a lot of parents out there who feel the same way. And I just, if you're listening, I just want to make clear that, that our kids can do amazing things you know, and, uh, utilizing the support that is available, you know, that the state provides or the County provides, there's no shame in that. You know, I, I hear a lot of parents feel like, well, my, my kid won't qualify or he's not eligible because it's only this or it's only that, or, you know, whatever. So I guess one of the last things that I wanted to ask you was for the parents out there who feel like their child wouldn't qualify or, or they feel like, they shouldn't be utilizing government services or whatever. Cause there's a lot of stigma I think that still floats around. Right. What would you, what would you say to them? You know, I think we all have potential, right? All of our kids have potential and that's all we want is we want to see our kids live up to that and do, you know, the best that they can. I think that, you know, these services are here, especially, you know, just for this, for your kids, for um, our, our future. Right. And we just, it's just here to help. And I think, you know, it never hurts to try, uh, you know, to go through the eligibility process. And if you're not eligible, um, the counties will help connect you to other services that maybe you are eligible mm-hmm. for. And so, and if you are, then that opens, you know, a, a world of services and supports that your kid can use. And, you know, thinking about their future as adults, um, you know, maybe when parents aren't um, able to be with the child every every day or all the time, you know, you're just setting them up for a future of people who will care about them and support them and and be there for them. Very cool. Yeah, I, I just it's that's very much on my mind a lot lately because I, I wish that I had connected much earlier than what I did uh, because my youngest is 15 going on 16 and then my oldest is 20. Four, and then I have a 17 year old who turns 18 next week. Um, and so there's busy guy. He, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's a whole thing, but, the, but, but like they're doing, they're doing amazing. And, and I'm so, I'm so proud of them. And I guess I just, you know, the message that I want to come from this is that, and, and I realize not everybody who's listening is in, is in, is in Ohio, but every state has something, you know? And so let me ask, let me ask you this. And, and then we'll, we'll close things out for people who are not living in Ohio that, that need help or support, where would be a good place for them to, to start to find resources that are local to them, regardless of what state they happen to be listening to this in? Yeah. So every state has a, a disability oversight agency. There is a website, uh, it's NASDAQ. Um, and I can get you, you know, that information. Mm-hmm. If you go on that website, every state director is listed along with their email address, their phone number, that sort of thing. And so you could reach out to your state lead uh, for information. And if not them personally, then that would at least give you the agency for which they work. Um, so you could reach out to them. Okay. Yeah. Cause there's, there's uh, like, as much as I try to focus locally on, on some things in Ohio, uh, there's, there's overlap and relevance to, to everyone inside of the United States. Cause there's, there's a lot of similarities state to state. There's nuances that are different. There's policies that are different, but there is help. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have that link, uh, in the show notes and the podcast and stuff like that so that people can go check it out. And it's a place to start if, if nothing else. And there are local boards of DDs like everywhere. They're everywhere. Uh, so, you know, Check it out. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Absolutely. That's what you guys are there for. Do you have any uh, parting advice or or anything that you would want parents or, or people living with disabilities to you know, be aware of as far as uh, what you guys do? I think you said it well. I think, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help and, you know, reach out to the department. We really do want to hear from people um, living with um, disabilities. We want to hear what your life is like and how we can uh, help make it better, what we need to, to do. So thank you. 
Yeah, thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. And what is the easiest way for people to connect with you guys? Um, we have on our website, so dodd.ohio.gov, um, there's a contact us button right at the bottom. You can always um, reach us that way, or I'm sure there are email addresses throughout the website as well. And I see you guys on social media too. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And thank you for everything that you guys do. Um, you know, I, I wish I had been more in touch with this stuff when my kids were younger, but I'm very aware of it now. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that by listening and by having this conversation, people will become more aware of it at an earlier, you know, earlier point and, and can, uh, you know, utilize those services to help their kids navigate life. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And, um, thanks for all you're doing to raise awareness Thank you. Uh, around the state. And the country. Appreciate it. It's awesome. Thank you. Before we go, I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you so much for taking the time to tune in and for all the support you guys have shown me over the last seven seasons. I am so grateful and appreciative of each and every one of you. If you have found this useful or you just enjoyed listening, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever app you're listening to this on or share it with your friends or whatever, uh, it's a great way to support the show. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You guys can reach me at the autismdad.link. That's the autismdad.link. And we'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye.